Hi, my name is Jerry Herto, and I just want to uh, tell you guys a little bit about whitewater rafting and what it involves and some of the key terms and stuff like that. Uh, I just want to say um, I went, I know that you guys are going to Black River. Uh, I went and I absolutely loved it. It was one of the greatest things that I've ever done. Um, I've done a little bit of kayaking down other ones too. I, I can tell that you guys have already went down one um, and that's really cool. For the guys that haven't, um, this is going to be an awesome time. So uh, the first thing that I'd like to describe to you, um, this just some of the terms and stuff like that, would be describing what a class is. Uh, generally a class, uh, what you're looking at is not the river itself, but you're actually looking at the rapid and what it is. Uh, a class is comprised of um, a couple things. The first one being uh, that a class has to deal with the way that uh, the white cap works. What a white cap is, is just the water as it comes up against the rock or whatever, how it would, how it would make that cap. That's what a white cap is called. And generally in a class, one to two, you won't see very much. Three, you're actually looking at, at a little bit. Uh, four is pretty big white cap, and actually, like you'll see some uh, eddies, hydraulics. We'll get, a, we'll, we'll find out what that is after. And uh, a class five is absolutely huge. Uh, you're looking at water, all kind of stuff. So this would be class two, uh, class two, class three, and uh, I would consider that definitely class four or five. Um, the next thing that we need to kind of figure out is what a season is. Now there's two different types. Uh, one is low and one is high. And in the low one, you're looking at around late summer. It's time that a drought has generally occurred. And uh, what, you, what you're going to be expecting there is there's going to be a very, very low level of water. Um, one thing that I can describe to you is uh, it's called the cubic feet per second CFS. What, what, it, what that basically is is if you want to Think about it. It's like a basketball. It's and uh, how much air you put into a basketball is generally a pound of pressure. So what you're looking at for a low season would be about 2,000, uh, 3,000, and a high season is generally 4,500 to 5,000. So that's that's the amount of water that's flowing to you at that particular point in time. Um, generally, for the low season, you look at children and the elderly would would generally like that, and for the people that are trying to really, really have a, uh, a good time. I, I would say that the more experienced adults, a high season would be better for you. What should I bring? There's a lot of things that we should bring. There's a lot of things that we shouldn't bring. Um, some of the things that we should definitely bring are sunblock. If you have, if you have any type of glasses or anything like that, we would definitely, definitely recommend that you have uh, just a glasses strap because as soon as you bump into something, you don't know where your glasses are going to be. Uh, I would definitely recommend that you wear closed toe shoes, anything, not, not sandals, not anything like that. Um, you don't want to bump your foot. And another thing, wear some gringy, kind of dirty um, swim stuff, you know, general swimmer and stuff like that. What they're going to provide for you is what's called a personal flotation device. It's also a life vest, and what that is is generally just anything that's buoyant that can keep you up. These are going to be specified and stuff like that. The way that you're going to use these is a little bit different than a normal life jacket. You're really going to tighten them down. Um, you got a helmet, obviously, and uh, and the paddle. And there's a lot of ways that you can use a paddle. Uh, Grab the, the top of it and not the side, because if you don't, then you're going to break somebody's teeth. Uh, what about the boat? What's that made up of? Um, generally, uh, it's really, really, really thick rubber, and the way that you sit in a boat is a little bit different from a kayak. What you do is you actually you sit on the side, and that's very important uh, in the way that you're, you're sitting and stuff like that. Okay. Some terms to know, some key things. Um, generally. What we're going to be talking about is uh, the way that you would, if, if somebody was to fall out of the boat, if somebody was to bail, then what would happen was they'd have to determine whether they're on the right side of the river or the left side of the river. And the way that you can do that is to make sure that you're floating downstream and then just go to the either left or the right. Uh, that's a very, very important thing. Active, active, aggressive, and passive. 
Um, active is when you're swimming, but not too much. Active aggressive is when you're really, really trying to get out. Um, there's a lot of times when you're going you're gonna to be in that position. And passive position, God forbid, if you hit your head or something like that, passive position is where you're just floating. Another thing, what is an eddy? Um, that's very important because they're going to call out a lot of things like that. Eddy is uh, just the way that the river works. But let's say you're going downstream and uh, you don't want to go all the way down. What you're going to do is try and veer off to the side. The way that the eddy works is you have a, a stream and then you have the way that the water pulls back. Where that pool is, is called an eddy. Another thing is a hydraulic. Um, this is very important because this is what actually gives you the rapid. It's where your, it's where, let, let's say you have a log. It's where the water changes and makes that, um, makes that little dip like that. And it's also where white caps and stuff like that. Uh, that's very, very important. Um, and one of the biggest ones that you can do is called a surf. And surf is absolutely amazing. Um, what it is, is an oversized hydraulic uh, that you can actually put your boat into. And, and what happens is the waves will just keep rocking you and rocking you. And it is absolutely a blast. I, I've loved it. Um, and just to finish up, there's uh, just a few things to know. Um, you know, definitely keep it safe. Wear that life vest is very, very important. It's maybe the only thing that's going to save you. Um, another thing that you need to keep in mind is just what to bring. Make sure you bring sunblock. It's really, really important. You're going to have a nasty little burn. And, and definitely close to shoes. Um, and then on top of that, uh, I would definitely say, um, you know, just, just keep in mind of the serves and stuff like that. Um, and what you can do. Are there any questions? Anybody? Has anybody ever gotten in major trouble going whitewater rocking with you? Um, not, not in mine specifically. I, I never had any trouble or anything like that. Um, uh, no, it, it was pretty good. I, I had a couple guys that had uh, kind of like bump shins and stuff like that. But other than that, it's been, it's been really good. What happens if you do fall out of the boat? Um, if you do fall out, then your team captain or whatever will start putting you into like certain situations, like if you need to swim left or swim right or whatever. But generally, when you fall out, you come right back up, and then you know you can just do it. So, anything else, guys? All right.